and one associate partner, the Abdullah Yul University in Turkey. So one distinguished thing among all the other 41 alliances that they have been approved for funding at this initial stage, the three years, um, we are a university that we don't locate in any uh, capital and we are small medium universities that we are very much focused on technology. So the main uh, topics regarding the research and the education topics that we would like to get involved include all the key enabled technologies as these have been recognized by the European Commission. So we are uh, located, we, we are targeted nanoelectronics, new material, photonics, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, and quantum computing uh, at this stage. Of course, the main idea is like this kind of uh, research topics and educational topics to be extended in all the disciplines uh, within the Alliance. The main, the main target and the main vision is like at the, end of this, at, the, at the end of this first period of funding to have created the framework, how we can build one university with nine campuses. This is the, the vision. So now um, we offer also some new approaches uh, regarding the higher education. So we don't want to be based on a learning uh, on to, to be based on learning achievements, but to be based on competencies achievements. And competence, you know, is one also of the priorities of the higher education for the next day. Uh, we would like to demonstrate our students' competencies, like so knowledge that can be shown, that can be applied. And the students, they can be select, you know, their studies based on the competencies that they would like to demonstrate and not based to a standard curriculum uh, that is very static. And of course, as you know, this is a model of 1600, uh, well known as the Hubbard University model. I mean, the things now they have changed uh, because of the COVID as well. And we are living a hybrid period. And the people, they have realized that we should uh, keep the good messages of the COVID area, which means the online characteristics, to couple these online characteristics and what we, we can keep from this kind of area to the face-to-face -face, um, delivery. So we are, we, we are very much focused on these blended actions. We are already organized two blended intensive programs that couples the face-to-face -face training with online training. And uh, also uh, one of our priorities is, is to use new tools that can link our university with society, with lifelong learners. We would like to accredit any learning outcome of our students, starting from a lecture learning outcomes, moving to a building block of a module uh, outcomes and to the whole uh, course as well. So we are trying to integrate these micro credentials concept and also in order to secure the certificates of any, of any learning outcome that our students or any citizen within our area would like to achieve with a blockchain technology. So in research now, some few things about what we have done in the research as a joint team, as a one team, is like we have created already the online expertise platform, an online platform that you can identify almost all the expertises within the Alliance. This helps very much our researchers in order to build up networks and build up you know, um, projects. Because if someone is, is interested in optoelectronics and photonics, you can type over there optoelectronics and photonics. And you have a list of names from the different universities within the Alliance that they are involved in photonics and optoelectronics. So it gives you the opportunity uh, to build a network very fast. Uh, also, we have uh, we are building right now the shared facilities platform where we are going to register all the equipment that in um, in close few in the near future can be used uh, within the shared facilities of uh, the alliance. This means that any of the scientists that is uh, registered to the alliance within the, the the member states and the member universities they can use uh, using of course you know a, a protocol uh, any facilities. Uh, within the Alliance. And not only this, in any proposals, these shared facilities, they can be uh, considered as a facilities of any researcher. So in any research proposal, this can be included among his uh, facilities or her facilities. We are very close to publish the first Athena research book, which is like joint publication, our publication book. It has been registered to all the platforms. And um, now we are on the uh, review stage of the submitted uh, publications, 52 uh, manuscripts, they have been submitted. And we hope 
this to be our main, let's say, research uh, uh, communication regarding the research that happens uh, within the Alliance. Of course, this is a very high challenging, challenging um, I would say, uh, target because you know the, our, the, our scientists at this moment, they would like to publish in a, in a high impact factor journals, but we think that we are an alternative at least for the research students to publish some short communications through Athena research book. Of course, you know, our research board has identified the, the joint actions, the joint research actions. I have already presented them and they are very close to the key enable technologies as European Union has mentioned to them. And already through the University of Zygian and through the University of Orleans, which means through the German government and the French government, joint research proposals and grants they have been announced and we have the first uh, awarding of these joint projects regarding the education as i told you we are very much focused on blended activities so whatever we are running combines and initially the online education and then the face-to-face -face meeting of our students and our teachers we have created the first the, our cluster of courses Cluster of courses is a family of courses that they provide similar learning outcomes and similar competencies. So there are a lot of clusters that we are running right now um, to integrate the, the, the modules under these clusters. I will give you an example. I'm responsible for the fundamental physics course and also for the photonics course. So my main target is like to collect all the related courses with the photonics and fundamental physics and integrate you know, these courses uh, within the Alliance in order to be, to be able to provide this course in any semester to the whole student community that would like to pick up this course. So our students, they will have the chance by in September, this is the target, uh, to follow my course in physics too, but also one of my lectures, because I'm not so good lecturer, probably can be followed online uh, from a, co a calling in Zygian or in Orleans. We have already developed the first four uh, online joint courses. Um, in my case, one of these courses is the soft and research skills development and another course that we are running in optical networks and optoelectronics. We have a database course and also a robotics course. So we would like uh, as well these online uh, courses uh, to, uh, uh, of course, to increase the number of them and uh, to be one of the standard tools. We have submitted an Erasmus Moodus uh, proposal for a joint master degree in nanotechnology and nanosensing. We're expecting the results by August. And also we have submitted a policy paper to the European Union to consider online transitions, mobilities, also as mobilities that they can happen and mobilities that they can count on the internationalization of the universities. Another tool that we are running is the Observatory of the Higher Education. And what is this by name? is like, look for the future. Look at the technologies of the future, look the pedagogies of the future. So we would like to inform and disseminate, you know, this uh, transforming technologies, our community. We would like to inform and to, uh, the, about the key enabled technologies as these are involved within the European Commission uh, in order to uh, facilitate your understanding. When I'm talking about transforming technologies, I mean of technologies that change completely the way that we think and the way we collaborate. And this is the same uh, meaning that we are using for industrial revolutions. Industrial revolutions happen when something changes completely the way that we think and the way that we, we act. Uh, regarding key enabled technologies means that technologies that they are used massively right now and they have an impact and also pedagogies. For us in Athena, education and research is the same thing are two interlinked tanks. So I will give you an example. Research generates new knowledge and automatically we would like this new knowledge to be transformed to educational program, either as a course, either as an undergraduate uh, course or as a postgraduate program. In this way, we fuel the new researchers to continue the research that we are doing on the topic that we target. So for us in the Athena, and this is the main message that we would like to provide, education and research should be evaluated at the same uh, level. Uh, you cannot have a good research if you don't train your student well. Otherwise, you know, what kind of research you are going to build? Eh? And uh, how do we do all of this? We, we organize colloquia talks in science. We, we organize colloquia talks in pedagogies and also colloquia talks in uh, policies. Uh, regarding the science, we invite people from all over the world that they are experts on 
transformative technologies or key enabled technologies right now. Uh, we are very happy that also uh, my colleague uh, Dimitrios Calderis wa was one of the speakers of this two year event. Uh, we organize pedag in pedagogies like problem-based learning, project-oriented uh, based learning, scrum in the higher education, flipped classroom approaches, uh, agile in higher education. These are the things that we are doing in the observatory. And also a part of the talks, we organize training events for the students. So a training event in smart cities and technologies has happened. And also in 2D materials and application has already happened. Regarding the policies, we invite people from the European Commission to talk to us about the Erasmus Without Paper, about the new, about the higher education um, European area, uh, in order to get informed and familiarize and integrate very fast the new priorities. Regarding internationalization, we would like to, this is one of the points uh, that I'm very happy also to be uh, among you. It's like we try, of course, to apply all the European, uh, all the Erasmus without paper policies and also to promote the mobility within the Alliance. But the most important, we would like to expand. And you know, Asia, like countries like yours, Vietnam, South, uh, um, uh, uh, Southeast Asia is one of the priorities areas that we would like to integrate within the Athena. We would like Athena to be your educational or your research hub regarding your international your collaboration. So you should consider Athena and also through Le Dimitrios uh, Calderis, you know, as an alliance in Europe that would like to collaborate with you. And um, we already have a, a, an African association of uh, universities as a part, will be very soon a part of the Athena. And also uh, a lot of Israeli universities, they would like to join, you know, our alliance. So if you would like any information regarding the Athena, please contact me. Otherwise you can contact Dimitrios. Dimitrios is a part of the Athena. So we will be very happy to um, assist and facilitate your collaboration with the future of the higher education in Europe. And the future is not Athena, are the European University Alliances and Athena is a part of them. So now moving to the next part, which are like, uh, what are the soft skills? Why soft skills? How do we teach them? And how do we evaluate them? This is my part. And I, I will say that soft skills, for me, I'm a laser physicist. I'm not a soft skills trainer, but um, uh, I, had, I would like to collaborate a lot with the, the industry and people outside of the market because this helped me also uh, how to think as a teacher, how to, to, to do my lectures. Uh, so I, once I was with um, a Boston Consulting uh, uh, pa uh, partner, and he used to, she used to say to me that we invite people from their curricula but we hire people from their soft skills. So as you will see right now from the statistics that they are coming from the Harvard Business Review, uh, soft skills are considered more important right now than the hard skills. So soft skills are non-technical skills, personal skills, and then uh, communicate, let's, let, let's say emotional related intelligence skills uh, that helps us to collaborate and um, uh, work with the others smoothly. So you can see uh, on the left uh, on the left part of my transparency some exams about hard skills, which are like knowledge that we can learn, and also some of these soft skills. And you can see different names like people skills or international skills. And uh, these are you know things that um, of course we should understand that skill is something that we can apply. We it's a knowledge and also. Uh, to demonstrate the application of them under uh, real life uh, situations. And um, the only thing, unfortunately, the higher, uh, the higher uh, education institutions, however the market highlights the importance of the soft skills, they don't pay, um, they pay little emphasis, emphasis regarding their development. So, I mean, I don't know in your university back there, but in Europe, I know that now we start to build particularly courses uh, regarding soft skills. But the most challenging is like how to integrate, and this is what I'm going to show to you, how to integrate the development of soft skills through any course. So I'm doing physics too. The way that I'm teaching physics too, it targets not only to teach our, our students the physics fundamentals, like the hard skills, and how these physics fundamentals are linked with electronics or you know, real life exams, but also how to develop particularly soft skills that they can be developed through my course. So soft skills, you know, relates to uh, like uh, skills like time management, networking, conflict management, communication skills, 
critical thinking, uh, adaptability, emotional intelligence, cultural intelligence. And be careful, you know, all these kinds of skills like problem solving, uh, decision making, presentation skills is something that any researcher should have. I mean, a researcher should think, should decide. And in order to convince the people to give you money, you should present the way that, you know, they should uh, listen, uh, you should convince them. So these are the skills that we should develop. And, you know, unfortunately, nothing happens within the universities. You know, it depends on the talent or on the curiosity of each one of us. So we would like to be more focused on this. Um, soft skills are considered, you know, the skills that will help any employer or graduate student, for example, to get employed, but also to get survived and get promoted through any organization that she's going to include. And soft skills right now on the 21st century are considered the only skills that can make the difference compared to what machines can do. You know, machines, they cannot demonstrate emotional intelligence. How the emotions can affect, you know, our decision, the way that we think and the way that we, under, uh, we are listening to the other people. Problem solving, you know, there is not, or decision making is not going to come from the machines. It's going to come from us. Uh, so these are very uh, essential um, for, uh, the, um, uh, for our graduate students and for us in general. And this is like something that comes from the latest issue of the Harvard Business Review. And they used to say that it is well proven that the hard skills contribute to only to 50% of the success of someone in any working place. And the 85% of them depends on the soft skill. Sometimes we used to say, ah, this guy is very big bullshitter. <laughs> okay, bullshitting, I'm sorry for my language, but it's very important in order to convince people to give you money. Eh? Bullshitting, if it, can, if it can be back up with things that you can do, convince the others. So, I mean, even though that I don't like, you know, the, the word bullshitting, you know, soft skills is not bullshitting, but it can be part of uh, the soft skills development. So here you can see, you know, from LinkedIn Edu, uh, the most important um, hard and soft skills. And you can see on the left panel, how important are the digital with the soft skills right now? And we are on the 21st century. The people, they should know these things. And if you are going to ask the employers, what do, are they are looking for uh, their employees? They, look, they are looking for people that they can be solution to their work and not a problem. And this is something that probably we face in the research labs. In the research labs, even in Harvard, they have noticed that they have excellent students regarding the hard skills. They know very well what they are doing, but what do they lack is the motivation and the initiative to take the initiative. So they are very good in order to execute orders of the supervisor, but then they are coming again to the supervisor and ask him or her what I have to do next. And this is lack of the, this is a failure of the education. This is a failure to train appropriate our students in order to be the initiators, to be, how can I say, the protagonists. Because still in Europe, we are using pedagogies that the teacher is the protagonist and the, and the students are the passive listeners. We have to convert this. We have to invert the situation because this is very important. It's very important because any employer would like a, a employees that they can allocate the time, they can take the decision, they can collaborate. They need people that they are not fighting always with the other people. They need team players. Nothing can happen without working within the team. Nothing will happen if you don't understand the different disciplines in order to promote your work uh, and also to convince people. People that they have the digital skills to mine and critical thinking and, and take the decision what kind of the information is the most important for the task that they have to do or for the future planning? Eh? And people that they understand how a team works, how a system works, and regarding the human related human resources and also the technology resources. And, and you know, this is like how do I start? Soft and digital skills right now are the most important things for um, any modern employee. These are, you know a list of soft skills, the 10 most wanted soft skills according to the Harvard Business Review that any uh, employee should have. Uh, and if you check one by one, I can show you right now that these are the skills that any researcher should have. 
These are the skills that any teacher should have. These are the skills that any student should have for international, more internationalization uh, studies, for more internationalization and collaboration. That is what we are doing right now. If you don't have them, you degrade your work and you degrade the collaboration between the different parts of the consortium. And it's not only soft skills because someone will tell me, ah, oh, come on, you know, I mean, what I, what I will need the soft skills if I don't know things? And this is what we propose, a nice blending and a nice mixture of soft with hard skills uh, is the success. And I will give you an example that this was like, comes from my personal, uh, let's say experience, how many times each one of you, you have been in a fantastic conferences, you are waiting for a fantastic scientist to present and his presentation or her presentation skills were very poor. Automatically, you stop to follow him eh? or to follow him. So I would like to give you an example how important is the marriage of both of them. You cannot do and you cannot success with ni not nice blending. And another interesting thing about the soft skills is like you can learn them independent of your talent. Probably your presentation skills are very poor now, but if you are going to get engaged, you are going to develop the, your presentation skills. It's a matter of devotion, it's a matter of engagement. So one of the big things is like, how do we teach them? And um, the way that we approach, we approach this uh, matter here in HMU in general in the Athena is like through uh, the engagement of social and emotional dimensions during teaching and learning. So it's the pedagogy that we are going to use. And the pedagogy that we, we use during the teaching of soft skill within other courses like physics, for example, is like um, to include and evaluate the process and engage a like, a like realistic pedagogies. And what do I mean by the, the term realistic pedagogies? Realistic pedagogy is something that links what are you teaching with real life, with real life problems? And a one nice approach, very old one, but not massively used in Europe, starting from Netherlands, and now is like a national approach in Denmark. In Denmark, everything happens using BBL from the high schools to the universities. Is like to start teaching your courses based on real life exams, whatever it is. This is physics too. In my case, I'm teaching physics too by starting with electronics because I belong in the department of electronic engineering. So I'm starting to teach electrostatics by starting to tell them that try to identify how a diode, a semiconductor diode works. And if you are going to identify and help facilitate, work as a facilitator of your students, how starting from a real life problem or a real, uh, um, real life device uh, to teach your course, you develop a part of the knowledge, you develop their team spirit because they are working as a team, they are, you are working their communication skills because they have to present to me their claims and also critical thinking because down there in the internet, you can find so many information, but the students, they should identify in mind, you know, what kind of information they are looking for. And these are like just a very fast example of what myself as a teacher, I'm checking. I'm checking the knowledge, but I'm checking also how do they develop these particular soft skills. And I will say to you, a nice approach is problem-based learning as a teaching pedagogy, as a, a realistic pedagogy, but also if you use Scrum as a framework of collaboration, you, I think that you can skyrocket uh, the impact and the effect of your students. Uh, so these are like what we are doing. How do we apply this? Uh, independent of the course. You know, in my course has physics too, but you can apply this kind of approach. I think that you can apply uh, in order to develop soft skills within, within any course, at but you have to change a little bit uh, the way of your teaching. So I select in the first course, I select, you know, some soft skills that I think that they can be linked with my course. But then of course I give the floor to the students to tell me what kind of other soft skills they would like to develop. Then I start to present in the stage two the, the main principles of these soft skills in order to have an idea what they would like to develop and also to have the knowledge to aware themselves if they are developing this kind of skill, if they have it or if they don't have it. 
And then I present some exams, how these soft skills are linked with the course. And then I leave the students by themselves during the process and the building of the hard skills knowledge. I told you an exam how the diode laser works and the students, they are coming and they try to identify and mine the knowledge regarding electrostatics using this kind of an exam or other exams. And then I, I try to link them also how the soft skills that they have selected to develop is linked with themselves and is linked with the knowledge that they are getting. So how, for example, the presentation skills has helped them in order to build the knowledge how the electrostatic works. Or how, what about the, 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 the importance of the presentation skills for this learning achievement and also for the personal uh, development. And this happens you know, within the first five, six weeks, then we have an assessment, we have an interview regarding the hard skill, but also the soft skill that the students, they provide, a, 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 how do we call it, a self, a, a, a self a kind of a interview to me. And also I'm trying through um, um, questionnaires to help them to identify together if what, I, what is the stage of building of the soft skill that they have targeted. Uh, and this happens also again at the end of the course. These are like small exams that I can use to you. So these are the eight assignments that you can use and I'm using for my course. So at the first assignment, as you can see, I don't know, uh, let me, if laser pointer works, like you can see in the first assignment, you know, I'm just um, attached you know, the documents in the second attachment that the students, they can learn by themselves or I can teach them, you know, the particular soft skill that can be selected uh, by them as a group. And then I'm providing also a text a, a publication, TEDx talks, that's a very important, it's a very nice tool in order to build any of the soft skills that you request. And the students combine what I have, uh, my lectures in the soft skills, but also what do they learn by themselves? And then they try to relate in the assignment three and four, these soft skills with the course. You know, how the soft skills is, uh, can help them to build the hard knowledge uh, that they have targeted, to communicate it, to collaborate with the others, and etc. And then on the second stage, we are moving about the emotional impact of these soft skills for the learning outcomes. Let's say how electrostatics, I mean, how, uh, these, soft, these soft skills is affected by their emotions. And this is like, as you can see, the emotional impact and the understanding and the expressing of this emotion during the building of the hard skill uh, development. Uh, of course, in the meantime, the students, they are working as a team. We are using the Scrum in higher education. Scrum comes, um, Scrums come from the ICT industry in order how the teams collaborate. Problem-based learning is a pedagogy, but the collaboration framework is Scrum. And in Scrum, the people, they learn by themselves. They have, a, we apply the agile principles that they are meeting with my PhD students every two weeks in order to feedback you know, their progress, but also they are meeting themselves in a daily basis in order to build the hard skill and also the uh, soft skill development. My lecturing time is used for me to tell them, tell me your questions, and I will start only with questions. I'm not giving any lectures. Of course, you know, the main principles, I'm using the flipped classroom approach, also, you know, the main principles to be recorded by my lecture, having frequent testing, but during the lecture time, I'm just asking them, what are your questions? And then I start my lecture answering only questions, all right? So uh, the teams, you know, they are uh, working together. And of course, each one of the students is building based on his perspective regarding the progress in the hard skill and also the progress on the target by himself or herself soft skill during uh, the reflective journal. They, they express over there, they are daily progress on this. Uh, the evaluation at the end from my side happens I'm evaluating their perspective. So I'm providing them a questionnaire in Likert scale about the achievements, hard and soft skills. And this is like an example that I'm using. Uh, but also uh, I'm demonstrating and I would like to check, you know, in three levels, you know, their understanding. Understanding of the process regarding the development of the soft skill, understanding of the process of the development of the hard skills. 
So I'm not using, or I will try, I, I have failed. You know, this is something that I tried, you know, massively in this semester, but, you know, they used to say to you, try two years in order, you know, to apply. The Danish, they try to apply problem-based learning as a systematic national approach for two years in order now to be very successful. So I'm trying to understand, you know, their understanding, their realization, uh, and, uh, and evaluate at the end, you know, the final product. So now about the Athena, you know, I have started, you know, to play and to, to be more coherent about the development of soft skills together with, um, uh, with Israeli colleagues from Technion and Weizmann in Israel. Uh, there are very high prestigious universities, but, you know, they have highlighted the importance of the soft skills regarding their researchers. So I have started the, uh, the Soft Skills Academy uh, with the initiative study in Israel that these universities, they participate is an initiative in order to promote the internationalization of Israeli universities. And through them, I, I try to identify what are the, how can I say, technology, how to develop this, uh, this kind of courses. You know, I'm in a very initial stage, uh, as I have realized after these uh, two years, but we have developed and we can invite people from the market, people from the scholar, prefer people from the market because they know better you know, what kind of personal skills they are looking for. We have developed the first uh, soft skills development. Then with the Athena, I tried to do the same thing. And we had the Athena Soft and Research Skills Academy. I forgot the research. And when I'm talking about research, I'm talking like to learn our students from undergraduate studies, how to read the paper, how to write a paper, how to review a paper, and how to answer to reviewers. Probably you will say to me, oh, Costa's bullshitting because, you know, how many of them they are going to be researchers? But this is, uh, this is also bullshitting because any student starting from its undergraduate thesis, she or he should think how to write a paper. What is the motivation of the work? How I'm going to justify this motivation and how I'm going to present my result? How important are the figures in order to explain someone very fast you know your story how important is the abstract when are you you should write the abstract that should be the last thing that you can do and, and etc so we these are the research skills that we uh, develop to our undergraduate students through the athena soft skills academy and we would like in the future to develop a mooc in this kind of skills and also our soft skills academy do not just promote the principles but also to organize workshops for them in the particular soft skills that they have developed. For this semester, we have organized more than 15 talks in, uh, in uh, soft skills development, inviting people all over the world, you know, starting from psychologists to physicists to computer engineers. And we don't target only this personal development, but also we target the new era of publications like the open science, now, ERC, for example, which is the most prestigious grant that someone can receive for in Europe, they used to say, don't write us the impact factor of journals that you publish. This is forbidden. They don't give a seat now, right now about the impact factor. You know, they would like to create new KPIs in order to qualify and uh, assess the quality of, of a science. All our lectures regarding soft skills, they have been recorded. This is uh, our YouTube channel. I will share the presentation with, left, uh, with Dimitris in order to share it with you. And you can have the chance to follow these lectures whenever you want. And I think with this, I don't know what time is it. Uh, okay, I was on time, like 37 minutes. I had 40. Uh, this is like my email. And thank you very much um, for this opportunity to present what we are doing regarding this initiative. Thank you.